Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to download and use the Ubuntu 24.04 LTS cloud image. The first thing you're going to have to do is navigate to Ubuntu's cloud image repository for 24.04 LTS. Now I'm not going to be showing you how to get there from the initial Ubuntu.com website because I've been unable to find a path to get there from that particular website. Rather, I'm going to be drawing your attention up here to the URL that I'm showing you that's highlighted and telling you I will provide it for you in the comments section of this particular video. And there's a lot of different images here for cloud images in this particular repository, including ones for different CPU types, including PowerPC, S390Xs, and whatnot. The one we're going to be looking for is going to be an AMD64 if we're here using Proxmox. That's if you're not using Pymox, but that's a totally different subject here in my opinion. And we're going to be looking for the one that ends in the .img. So right here, the one that we're going to choose is called Ubuntu-24.04-server dash cloud image dash AMD 64.img. Then we're going to go ahead and right click on that and we're going to copy link address. After that, we will have to move back to our Proxmox web interface as I have done here, highlight our server and click shell. Clicking shell is gonna bring up a separate web browser window, which is going to allow us to interact with our Proxmox server in the command line environment. We're gonna operate here right in the main root folder. And if I enter LS, you can see there is nothing here in the root folder. So in order to download this cloud image onto our Proxmox server, we're gonna type wget, and then we'll paste that URL, press enter, and Proxmox will automatically download our cloud image for us. Now all Proxmox is downloading this cloud image, we can head back to the web interface and we can begin prepping our Proxmox server with the ability to actually receive this cloud image. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a blank VM profile in order to put that cloud image into. To create this blank VM profile, we're going to press create VM, then we'll give it a name. I'm calling mine Ubuntu 24.04 video. Then we'll press next, and we're going to choose do not use media type here using guest OS as Linux. For our system, we'll check QEMU guest agent and leave everything else as default. Then we're going to move on to disks. We'll actually remove the disk from the system. Press next. Ubuntu server runs fine on one core. And as I've noted before for performance issues, I'm going to choose host operating system. This may not be the correct choice for you if you're in a cluster or some other environment. If you are, I would suggest using defaults. Now I'm going to go to memory. Two gigs is going to be fine for Ubuntu server, so I will leave it at 2048. Going on to network, again, if you need to configure a bridge or a VLAN for your particular setup, go ahead and do so at this point. For me, my default bridge and no VLAN is going to be the perfect setup. And for Ubuntu server, there's no changing of Wi-Fi drivers required, so we can continue on. At the confirm screen, we wanna make sure everything's configured right, and we can press finish. At this point, Proxmox is going to go ahead and create the VM for us, or at least the VM shell that we will modify here in a minute. When the VM shell is created, we need to take note of the VM number, which ours is going to be 101 here. Yours may differ depending on how many other VMs and containers you have on your Proxmox system. We'll highlight the VM we want. We're going to go to hardware. We're going to press add, and we're going to add a cloud init drive. The cloud init drive defaults to IDE, and that will be fine for us with Ubuntu. And for storage, we'll go ahead and select our storage drive. The default's going to be local LVM, but if you've added other storage to your system, you will have that available if it is available for system drives. Once we check that, we can go ahead and press add and it'll automatically add to our profile. Now it's time to go back to our system shell and our image should be downloaded. Typing in LS, we can see that our image has been downloaded. At this point, you can go ahead and resize the drive if you wish. 
we will be using the default drive size for our particular instance. So what I will be looking to do is import this into our VM shell. Remember a minute ago, I told you to remember your VM ID. This is the point where we're going to use it. The first thing I will do is highlight the name of the file that downloaded and go ahead and copy it. Then I'm going to type QM import disk as one word, a space, the VM ID, the file name, then the storage location I wish to store my particular drive image, which in our case and the default from most Proxmox systems is going to be local LVM. Now, if you're using ZFS, ButterFS, or something else, that name will change. For example, if you would use ZFS, it would be local ZFS. For my system, again, it's local LVM, just as shown. At this point, you can press enter and the import process will begin happening. Now, it always shows 100% twice and hangs there for a little bit before it finishes. It won't be fully imported until the finish happens and you see us return back to our main command line. This is what it looks like when it's successfully finished importing the disk. At this point, you can move from your shell window back to your web interface. And if you were in the hardware tab like I am, you will see unused disk zero. Go ahead and select unused disk zero or unused disk, whatever number it is. It should be zero because we created no disks when we made the VM container. But for some reason, if you had other disks created, it may be a different number. And then press edit. Pressing edit will give you a screen where we can actually add this image in that's tied to your container into your actual container as hardware. Remember, if you have an SSD, you want to go ahead and check discard at this point. Other than that, for Ubuntu, you can leave all of these settings as default unless you need to confer further configure for performance for your particular Proxmox server. And then we can press add. Pressing add goes ahead and adds that disk in as a disk drive. Then we can move on to our cloud init configuration. We're going to want to configure a user here, a password, our DNS settings if so desired, our SSH public key if desired, whether or not to upgrade packages. And as part of a demo to show everything working, I'm going to set this as no so I can actually install them for you just to show everything working live. And then your network configuration. Highlighting that, pressing edit, we can set whether or not we have a static IP address or we're using DHCP. I wish to use DHCP today, so I am going to click that. If you did use static, remember, as always in Proxmox, you're going to want to use a slash and your CIDR notation and a common network from, that operates from 1 to 254 is going to be slash 24. We'll be using DHCP, like I mentioned, so we'll press OK. And then we're going to click Regenerate Image. Now, moving to the next setting, we're going to have to go to Options, Boot Order, Edit, and we're going to need to uncheck our CD-ROM, our network, and our other CD-ROM or our cloud init drive that we spoke about a minute ago, and check our local drive that we created with the image that we imported. Then go ahead and press OK. And at this point, all other settings should be set for us and at least configured for a basic use of the Ubuntu 24.04 cloud init image. So we can go ahead and press start and open our console. With our console open, we can see that we've started booting. And now that we've fully booted, you can notice that it is used the host name that was created in the configuration of the VM container, and it's asking for a login. The login information will be the login information that you set up in the cloud init configuration file and we are logged in. At this point, we can go ahead and execute commands like sudo apt update, and we can also see that giving it sudo commands, it does not require a sudo password. So if you would wish for that to happen, you would have to do configuration at this point to tell sudo that it wants to ask for a password. With that, you can see we do have eight packages to install, and we are indeed able to issue commands and interact with this cloud init image. I hope this gets you using cloud init files. They are very handy for fast setup of VMs, although they do require some command line work 
verse if you installed it where you could live in a graphical user interface. This is entirely up to you. I find them very useful for quickly spinning up images in a fast manner that I want to use. I can also further customize them with other tools to actually have the software I want in them. So it's extremely quick to fire up a custom LAMP server or web server or even a custom Docker server for different projects and video demos. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation of how to use the Ubuntu 24.04 Cloud Init image on Proxmox, and you consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to continue to get content from Virtualize Everything, as well as to help Virtualize Everything on their mission to teach and learn Linux and virtualization technology using video media techniques. Have a good night.